Every day it is the same, the same darkness, the same ritual for Munwabasi and his family, for them and for the thousands of others getting ready for work. Any crime. So it's better. Slowly, human shadows gather at different corners of the slum. Like the others, Munwabasi easily spots the truck that will bring him to the farm. At the end of the road, 13 hours of work await Munwabasi and his companions. Impossible for us to go any further. Munwabasi works in one of those farms where time and politics don't seem to have changed much in the past 20 years. We are not welcome. Tourists are sparse around here, but everybody may have had a taste of the region. This is the land of South African table grapes, one of the country's riches. Europe, the Middle East, Asia, 2,008,000 tons of South African grapes are exported each year. They mainly come from here. Stoffland in Afrikaans means land of dust. It's difficult to know how many people live in the shacks. Nobody really keeps track. South Africans, immigrants, legal or not, from Zimbabwe or Lesotho, permanent or seasonal, altogether they might be as many as 50,000. They all live off the table grapes. Even in South Africa, no one had really heard about Stoffland until November 2012, when workers dared to go on strike. Three months of blockades, three months of fighting, which succeeded in paralyzing the local economy, Sean was one of the leaders. We were working from 6 o'clock until 6 o'clock. We get only one lunch from one, uh, half past 12 to 1 o'clock. So even the manager there was rude. The supervisors were rude. We were pushing people around, saying whatever they want to say to the people. So, But now since the strike has happened, everything started to have a shift. But there is a difference than before, because before we were getting 69 rand, now it's 105. But not all the farmers are paying that uh, 105. There are good farmers that are paying around 117, 125. And there are those who are still paying the 80 rand and 95 rand. And the money that we are working from the farms is not that much, because you have to still have to buy clothes and, and stuff and food. So it's very sad. And the, the poverty is, is high. Not everyone can survive. 
Despite some electrical lines and a few water points, the place is just a jumble of corrugated iron, cardboard, and rubbish left in the open. Nobody cares, no, even the government, not anyone. So the feeling is there each and every day when I woke up. I see the feeling. There is a lot of change since the apartheid, but the conditions that the people are still staying on. So I still believe that we are not celebrating anything. Only the rich, the elite uh, are celebrating them. The working class is still struggling to, to continue with living. So there's nothing to celebrate. During the day, the entire slum is a ghost town. Men who work leave at 5 a.m., women an hour later. Babies are left behind. Many nurseries had to be improvised. Petronella, she arrived six years ago from Zimbabwe, owns one of them. At 44, she concedes it is a good business. 50 rand per baby left for the entire day in the dirt of a small yard. Uh, it's not uh, Older children are at school. There are nine in the area. Education is not free, 100 rand per household. Different grades are mixed in the same classroom. The quality of education is poor, and the real highlight of these schooling hours is the free meal distributed for lunch. they can cope because there's food for them. By the environment at home, we can't do anything about the environment at home. Because especially during the off-season, when there's no work, you will find some of the parents loitering, also looking for food. As a person who grew up in this place, see the population in Dorans, it's a very overcrowding. There's a lot of crime now. Pupils are using drugs, which were not here before. Lot of learners or children are at squatters even now. I would like to see them educated, not going back to the farms. Being a product of, farm, of working on a farm, me too. I told myself I won't go and work on the farm. So I wouldn't like to see any kid I am educating working on the farm. It's my duty to try to encourage and even try to educate parents. The main reason of educating their kids, not to go and work on the farm, but to try to give them a better living. That's your hope, but in That's reality, what are the odds? Oh, but in reality, in reality doesn't happen. Men have been cutting grapes for the past three hours, 10 more to go. This is their first 15 minute break of the day. They will stop for an hour for lunch and 15 minutes again in the afternoon.
The 180 employees are paid the minimum wage, 105 rand a day, but here one can make up to 200. The more you harvest, the more you make. Women, with the precise movements of their hands, prepare the packaging of the grapes, 18 tons a day. They will end up on the shelves of our supermarkets. The organization is similar on every farm, but in some, where cameras are not allowed, the working conditions seem horrendous. In a recent report, Human Rights Watch denounced farms where even access to toilets was denied to the workers during the day. The season is short, the process quick. Once cut and packed, the grapes are sent to a storage facility where they will be dispatched to Cape Town Harbor. Less than three weeks later, the grapes will be on many European tables. In the winter of 2013, the Social Development Department reported that de Dorans had one of the highest rates of malnutrition in the country. Lack of food, lack of hygiene as well, the youngest are the first victims. Like all the children in the world, those of Stoffland have make-believe tea parties. In the dump, in the center of the slum, they share rotten food and discarded chemicals. We have a lot of um, children with, um, that is very, very underweight. And due to that, um, they also end up with um, loose stools, diarrhea, and also with um, severe pneumonia as well. What we also experience is that um, you know, um, we speak to the mothers on a daily basis, bring your sick child to the facility, but uh, the first thing they do is take the sick child, go to the crèche, leave the sick child there, and they go to work because they, for them, they need the money. You know, they are desperate um, for that. How far pregnant are you? How many months? Do you have enough pills? Yes, I do. So far, I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to get it. There will always be a need for more money. Um, but we, what we try and do is try and do the best we can with what we have. And that's, that forces us to think smarter and work smarter so that we can enhance the patient's experience with the resources that we have. But the need is much greater. If I think where we were with primary health care services 10 years ago and how far we've, we've moved forward, um, it's, an, it's actually, I think, exceptional what the department has done. Well, we also, we also have a, a high rate of HIV as well. Uh, we have 1,500 uh, ARV um, patients and we also have TB in, the, in this community. We have a lot of social problems. We have unemployment issues and as you said previously is the abuse, alcohol abuse also. <laughs>
At dusk, dozens of trucks start following their morning tracks. Like Munwabisi, the workers are dropped off where they have been picked up. Because 13 hours in Ninjika Kuru for Pangel. Because Galolongi Clash have a source about 13 hours of the Njengam to Poselenza Pansgua. So look at the go first, I went to Yongo Yenza, so look at Yenza by first, by first, by first. So by a violin, you can go to Slovel. Yeah, Ufumene Glimala M7 Zin. For So in English, I mean, as a poison, zakela pem zimben, the the fumar do banana ba impilu ya my centra anga. Thingi ka ten the ends and don't the thing guy the thing one lang and fizu yam ogani the suitu kukufa. Thingi ka ten the ends and don't the so on the thing do banana ba kulo don't lay again come new zalong abe bangam fumar na ongai nemslam ba benile pain in denial gabo. In clusters, the shadows of Stoffland make their way back to what they call home. Just an ordinary day in the land of dust. <laughs>